Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Between Monsters and Men. Today we are looking into the curse of Lorenzo Doe. Founded in 1767 by Solomon Gross and his wife, Mary, Jacksonburg, Georgia became a small town nearby the city of Salvania. It didn't take long before the town flourished with every year that passed but never had it grown in its popularity than in 1820. Regardless, it was a rough town with a terrible reputation. Saloons outnumbered all other businesses combined, which resulted in plenty of fighting and drinking as the local pastime. In 1849, George White wrote in the statistics of the state of Georgia that in the mornings after drunken frolics and fights, you could see the local children picking up eyeballs in tea saucers. It was 1821 when it all began. A hunched man with long hair and a beard traveled into Jacksonboro in hopes to make a change to one of the most rowdiest towns in southern United States at the time. Lorenzo Doe preached at a Methodist church in town where he would deliver a fire and brimstone sermon. To alert the good people of Jacksonboro, he would ring the church bell and they had come. Unfortunately for him, the chiming of the bell also alerted the hooligans as well, which quite outnumbered the good people. They threw rocks and bricks through the church window, shooting their pistols into the air. Outraged, Lorenzo finished his sermon and then followed the crowd into a local tavern. He grabbed an iron bar and, and split open a barrel of whiskey. The liquor quickly covered the floor, earning an immediate beatdown on Lorenzo by the bar attendees. In comes a mason named Seaborn Goodall, who quickly got Lorenzo to safety of his house. Another version has him riding into town on a horse in 1820, yelling at people, Repent, brethren, repent. Understandably angry, the townsfolk threw tomatoes and rotten eggs at him. Lorenzo was persistent, though. He climbed down from his steed, grabbed an iron tool, and broke open a barrel of whiskey. The town rushed at him, but before they could grab a hold of the preacher, a man came forward and got him to safety. This man was a fellow Methodist and Mason named Seaborn Goodall. In either version, Seaborn took Lorenzo to his house where he was allowed to stay the night. The house was just outside of town, decent size, but no one dared to bother Mr. Goodall because he owned quite a bit of land in town. It was that night that the usually stubborn Lorenzo decided he would leave town the next day. The next day, Lorenzo was about to leave, but before he could, the town taunted and threw objects at him in rage. Upset yet again, Lorenzo placed a curse upon the town. Lorenzo left, leaving behind a curse that involved the entire town except for one house, the good old house. Windstorms came along, blowing off roofs of many buildings. Many were destroyed by mysterious fires. The Beaver Dam Creek, at which Lorenzo walked past when he left, which was normally docile, became prone to flash floods that would sweep away entire houses. Even the General Sherman's march to the sea came through and destroyed properties. The town of Jacksonboro began to disappear leaving behind the Seaborn Goodall House. Matter of fact, it still stands today. It was restored by the Briar Creek DAR, and it is now open for tours on the first Saturday of every month between April and November. Lorenzo Doe was born October 16, 1777 in Coventry, Connecticut. He was a sickly child, suffering from asthma and a few other illnesses. But as he got older, he was said to have preached to more people than any other preacher of his era. Regardless of his popularity, he was unkept in all the terms it means. He was never hygienic. His hair and beard were long and never combed. He usually had one set of clothes and he wore them till they were scraps. The only time he switched clothes was when people donated some to him. However, through his dirtiness, he became an important figure in the Second Great Awakening and even a very popular writer. His autobiography was the second best-selling book in the United States at the time only being passed by the Bible. Both in America and Britain, he attracted large crowds that came to hear and see him, both persecuted and as well as admired him. Due to churches being close to him, Lorenzo would often preach in town halls, barns, and even open fields. He appeared unexpectedly at public events, announcing in a loud voice that he would come return exactly one year from the day and would actually do so. He never disappointed his audiences. His preaching consisted of shouting, screaming, crying, begging, flattering, even insulting and challenging people in their beliefs. So popular he was that there is a recorded proof of Lorenzo preaching in front of a crowd of 10,000 people 
or more. Of course, due to his type of preaching and his insulting people of their beliefs, he's met with plenty of threatening audiences from parts of the southern United States. He was sometimes so bad he would be ejected from towns, pelted with stones, eggs, and other rotten foods. Lorenzo Doe never mentioned Jackson Burrow in his writings. Now that doesn't mean he didn't wander in and simply kept it out of his texts. Historians are certain that he did visit the town and it had been around 1821, since that was the year Goodall owned his house. Also, after 1821, quite a few children that were born in the area were named Lorenzo. What makes me curious about this particular thing is why would people who hated him and kicked him out of the town name their children after him? It could be that maybe the few people who enjoyed his preachings named their children after him, and let's just hope that's the case because otherwise that's just a little weird. Weird things did occur in Jacksonboro after 1821 as mentioned. The tiny town no longer exists today, with only one house still standing, rocks, trees, and dirt are the, all that is left of its memory, other than the history itself. So tell me, what do you think? I am no longer monetized on YouTube anymore. If you wish to support this channel, feel free to check out my Patreon page. I create videos on abductions, cryptids, hauntings, serious killers, and more. Be part of the family. If you can't support me that way, like, comment, and subscribe here. I'd like to thank my supporting Patreon thus far. Keep watching for more creepy and bizarre videos.